A lot has changed since I started my channel. Back in May 2024, you not only got away with creating really basic and simple apps, but you got approved and added to the App Store. Now, if you try, you'll get rejected. Bam! Guideline 4.2, design minimum functionality. So in this video, I'm gonna show you why Apple keeps rejecting simple apps and what I do instead to still get mine past the approval process. I've been developing apps now for five years and I've generated over a million dollars in App Store sales. But when I started in 2020, the App Store rules were different. They just weren't as strict. One of my first apps was just an app that tracked how many squats you did each day. You just tapped a button, record your squat, that's it. Nothing special, nothing overcomplicated, and that app went on to generate over $10,000 in revenue. But if I submitted that exact same app today, it wouldn't even be listed on the App Store, which kind of sucks. The strategy I used was to build basic small apps to see which ones actually got traction. These apps would have the basic minimum functionality needed to target a specific keyword or test an idea. Instead of second guessing what my customers actually wanted, it allowed me to get an initial version out onto the App Store and get that crucial feedback. The sooner I got the app onto the App Store, the sooner customers can actually use it, the sooner customers use it, the sooner the feedback cycle begins. And this process actually has an unintended consequence. It actually creates more ideas. As you dive into the app you're building, you start to realize how many other spin-off apps you can create. As you get feedback, you start to realize what the actual pain points are, and that makes it easier to visualize more app ideas and come up with more solutions. And it all starts with that very simple version. The one that you release, the one that has the bare basic features, the one that tests your idea or tests your keywords. This is known as the minimum viable product or MVP. According to Google, a minimum viable product is the simplest version of a new product that could be released to early customers to gather validated learning about user demand with the least effort. So it's like a totally legit business practice adopted by nearly every other industry, except apparently not Apple. <laughs> now apps that are submitted with basic functionality get rejected for having basic functionality. So what is an app developer to do to get their basic app approved by the App Store in 2025? And the answer is simple, add more features. Okay, thanks for watching my video. I hope it was useful. Actually, no, it's a bit more complex than that. There's kind of a balancing act here. Add too many features and you risk the app being confusing, bloated and annoying. Not enough, and you get rejected. All right, all right. So if Apple's rejecting simple apps, how do you actually get yours approved? Here's my three-step process that seems to work pretty well. Step one, build the minimal viable product, like the proper minimal viable product, the one that will get rejected by Apple if you release it in this current state. And I always ask myself, what is the core feature or features that this app needs to serve the keyword I'm targeting or test the app idea I have in mind? And if you think hard enough about it, you'll find a bunch of features you can add. Now, I imagine I've been kidnapped by a rogue government agency. They're like, hey, that Adam guy is good at coding. We need to take him. And then they lock me in a dark room with nothing but my MacBook. And they're all like, code your app in a day or we destroy your MacBook. Ah ha 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 ha. Not really, I just made that up. But you get the point. Start thinking about the features that you would code if you only had a day to build it. Chances are this is your minimal viable product. The basic features you need to test your idea. But before you actually start coding, we need to dive a little deeper. Step two adding complementary features. You might think the best place to find more ideas is to download your competitors' apps and see what features they've added. But don't do this, not during the initial phase anyway. It skews your creative thinking and you end up just regurgitating the exact same apps that every single app in your niche has. That's boring. Instead, it's time to visualize how the user actually uses your app. Take a deep breath in now. Exhale, you are the user, you are the user. And it's here that I've come up with some of my proudest ideas, either by thinking how I think the app should actually work or thinking of other apps in other niches and how they've tackled similar problems. 
And sometimes the best thoughts come from fusing one idea or a technology with another. When I acquired iMic, it was a simple app that broadcasted your iPhone's microphone to a Bluetooth speaker. Basically just turning your iPhone into a wireless speaker. It had two use cases. First, for conferences, for business, meetings, weddings, that sort of thing. And for this, it did a good job. The second use case was for karaoke, the act of singing out of tune to music. And I had the thought, what if you could add filters to your voice and sing along to the music as well? That would kind of be fun. Instead of adding a bunch of complicated menus, I created a simple interface that took inspiration from Snapchat filters. But instead of filters that were used for video, these were filters that were applied to audio. This took a basic app that broadcasted your voice over Bluetooth into an actual product that transformed your voice and broadcasted it over Bluetooth. Since adding the features, it has gone on to generate over $30,000 in revenue and growing. And step three, it's just kind of gotta make sense. The way apps get bloated and too confusing is when you add features that just don't make sense. The aim isn't to make a single app that serves every single use case possible. And just because people suggest a feature doesn't mean you should add it. Our job as a developer, as a product designer, as an engineer, whatever you wanna call us, is to have a vision and a purpose for the app. Then every feature that you wanna add gets passed through that filter. You've made an intermittent fasting tracker app. Don't go adding ChatGPT prompt to it. Yes, AI is a hot topic, but you don't have to actually add it to everything. I know that's a controversial thing to say, but it doesn't have to belong in everything. And that goes for the latest new technology or the latest craze. Just because it exists doesn't mean it has to go into your app. And I'm guilty of this too from time to time. Sometimes I have to stop and think, is this a technology that I'm personally interested in, which may be skewing me objectively, or is this something that adds value to my original vision and idea? Do you think Apple's making the App Store better by rejecting simple apps or just killing innovation? I'd love to hear your take in the comments below.